Hello, beautiful souls. I hope you're well. Today, I have a beautiful lady from Australia, uh, a little bit further from, um, you know, it's a, I think you're the person I've interviewed that's been the farthest from Montreal. So that's really exciting. I feel like I'm traveling in the world with these really beautiful interviews and beautiful souls I'm interviewing. Um, today, we have Melanie. Melanie is a, a lovely lady with a lot of experiences uh it would seem in different level contacts um perhaps a little bit of disclosure going on here today so it's going to be very interesting to learn a little bit more about melanie's experiences uh melanie uh welcome first of all <laughs> hi gail it's lovely to be here with you it's a real pleasure to have you melanie um so Melanie you told us you told me a little bit before when we were talking the two of us together that uh, you had uh, you know some training in different in different um healing modalities and things like that but life has brought you on a journey where you found the best way to work your mission or, or doing your your spread your beautiful light through contact with people on an everyday basis you know you worked in retail you um uh, raised your your son um, by yourself, which was I imagine a lot of energy and, and challenges, and you've done and you've done this and bringing your light to the world in that beautiful way, uh, you know. And sometimes uh, people tend to think, oh, I should be this or that or study this or that, but you know, it's really about how we are and how we really shine our light from what we do and how we are. Uh, so I'll, we could start with that if you'd like to tell us a little bit about your experience and how you have been able to bring to others that beautiful energy and high frequency that you that you have. Um, yeah, so for many years I've worked in retail. Um, I've worked a lot in, in the health food industry, so I've worked mm -hmm. in some different health food stores, um, which has been great. I find that um, people often just open up to me and tell me a lot of things about their personal lives. And, you know, I've often joked about being a therapist on minimum wage because, you know, people would just literally be telling me these really personal things. And, mm -hmm. and I, I'm a good listener. I, I enjoy listening to people's experiences. And um, I just would often feel like, you know, some kind of energy was coming through me to them. And it was sort of like, um, you know, at times in my life I felt, you know, I mentioned to you before, sort of a bit like I haven't achieved that much. I, I went to university years ago but I dropped out and, you know, all of that stuff and don't have any, you know, qualifications really except for, you know, in, in sort of alternative therapies. Mm -hmm. But um, but then my sort of my guides, my staff family said to me, no, 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 you are actually meant to be in this kind of position because, you know, when you work in a, a job where you're working with the public, you're kind of on, on the front line. You get all sorts of people coming in when you work in a, a store. Um, and, like, you know, it's like I was meant to be there to sort of transmit that frequency, you know, as star seeds. I, I, I identif identify as a star seed. Um, you know, that's what we're meant to do. We're meant to be sort of a bridge for that those high frequency energies that's yeah. why we we came to earth at this time well, that's what i believe so and it was it's yeah it's been okay. very much about just connecting with people on that just very simple level simple um, but not so simple because it yeah <laughs> it's a lot of no but it demands a lot of pres uh, presence i'm sorry and just one thing i want to mention is that Personally, I believe that people who are good listeners is one of the most, you know, forgotten arts of this world is to be a good listener. I mean, we are so caught up in the chaos of social media, having too much information, so much happening. And people who are actually present and then mindful in their mindfulness to be good listeners. I mean, they're like angels in this world, you know, I mean, they bring so much by their presence. And I think that's an incredible gift. So don't yeah. put down any of that, because I mean, I think it's the most amazing thing you can bring to the world. But anyway, just sorry, just wanted to mention that. Yeah. And I, I have done sort of, um, you know, natural therapies training. I, I did a flower essence therapy course, a very involved course, like many years ago where I was learning how to make flower essences. And this was before my son was born and I did Reiki training. And I did so many different kinds of workshops and, you know, do with healing and, hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. Like I was, you know, I've always been very drawn to those kinds of 
things. And but then, you know, I, I had my son and then I very early on in his life became a single mother. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so some of that stuff just got put aside and I just focused on, you know, raising my child and, you know, I needed more stable income. So I, I you know, was just continued to work in retail and and sort of didn't really pursue the the, the healing arts. <laughs> yeah. um, Perhaps you brought it so. into your art in a way, into your yes. presence unconsciously. Maybe it just, you know, all of that did its work. Yes, yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. I'm sort of getting to the stage where I'm I'm sort of wanting to perhaps do some kind of healing um, work, but I've been going through quite an intense process of self-healing over the last um, few years, really, Mm -hmm. because I've had a lot of stuff come up, a lot of, like, memories and things, um, some, you know, quite traumatic to relating to abductions and things like that. I mean, I've had memories of some of those things since I was a child, but sort of a lot more has come up over the last few years and it takes quite a bit to sort of heal some of that stuff. So I don't feel like I'm ready to sort of, you know, help other people yet, but that's actually what I would like to do when it's the right time, especially people that have had, you know, abductions and sort of, you know, SSP type experiences. I'd actually like to to work with helping those sort of people, but at the moment I need to sort of still process and heal (laughs) some of my own stuff. I understand, and I think right. it's a it's a beautiful, um, very wise um, realization on your part that that healing process is very crucial in order for someone to be able to help others. And you know, I I think it's it's very humble in your way, and and very wise to be able to say, okay, I need I need to heal myself first and do that inner journey and 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 heal before I you know actually offer support. And I'm sure you're going to be like an amazing support to these people, not only through you. The experiences uh, that you've gone through, but also through that healing process, will probably bring a lot of people. W- would you like? W- would you feel comfortable uh, sharing a little bit more about some of these experiences you've had uh, since childhood uh, regarding? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I had a lot of. Um, well, I had a few experiences around the same time, um, around the age of five or six years of age. Um, I'm not exactly sure in which um, sequence these these happen, but I think the first experience was actually um, my mother and I witnessed a, a craft, a, some kind of ship um, near our home. Uh, I'm originally from Tasmania. Okay. So this was, we lived in a, a kind of semi-rural, um, you know, housing area. Mm-hmm. It was like a, a cul-de-sac and then there was like a field near mm-hmm. our home because it was it used to be farmland. It was like a new um, housing development. Okay. So, yeah, one night there was this um, ship out there, basically like a circular ship um, with sort of like lights around the the edge of it. It was very bright. Okay. Um, we were out on our front porch um looking at it and my mother actually got quite um freaked out (laughs) and she was like come back inside come back inside it was quite large and it was quite low down it was like pretty obvious okay like it wasn't cloaking itself at all okay and um I was absolutely fascinated I wasn't like scared at all so she made me come inside but then I actually sneaked back out again Mm. to have another look at it so, um, yeah, yeah, that was a pretty amazing experience. So, anyway, the next day my mother and I were both um, sick, so I, I didn't go to school that day. My mother was quite ill. She was actually in, in bed. And um, there was a knock on the door and I went to the door because she was, like, asleep. And there was a man in a, a military, a blue military uniform, I'm guessing he was from the Air Force because okay. um, apparently at that time um, they were the who the people who were researching, you know, UFO sightings and things like that, and they were still doing that in Australia at, at that time. Yeah. Um, he had like a, you know, a hat on and like a suit jacket, you know, very quite sort of formal looking, 
and he asked me if my mother was there or my father and I said my mother's in bed asleep she's sick and then he asked me he said did you see anything in the sky last night Mm -hmm. and I said yes I did and he's like oh really you did and he asked me to describe what I saw and I I told him about about the ship and he said oh that's very interesting and you know he was taking notes and and then he just said thank you and he left okay Um, so there was a just sorry I just want to cut you there that was kind of a relatively positive experience you felt not only from the ship in terms of like it wasn't like you didn't feel nefarious but also the gentleman who came you didn't feel like it was like a sort of mib or anything like that it was more just like an army man yeah i kind and okay yeah like a man in black type of thing yeah okay no it wasn't like a scary sort of yeah negative or men in black type experience he was he was friendly and nice he was just um you know sent there to investigate i think um Mm -hmm. And yeah, he had like a blue uniform on, so I, I think he was probably from the Air Force. Okay. Um, yeah. So that experience wasn't negative, like. Um, so yeah, I, I felt sort of okay about all of that. And then the next day, um, I went to school, and my mother and I were walking down this path, which actually went past um, the field where we had seen the ship, and on the ground below where the ship had been there was like a circular like burnt charge sort of mark hmm. like a perfect circle okay um yeah so we saw that as well which was kind of like you know physical evidence of this craft having been there um i have spoken to my mother about this um you know over the last sort of few years and she she does remember she, her memories of seeing the craft are, are very vague, um, which is interesting because, you know, sometimes they kind of mess with people's memories and things, but yeah. I remember that more than her. But she does sort of have a vague memory of it. Okay. But she has a very clear memory of, of seeing the burn mark on the, okay. on the ground. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, and my mother is not into any of this kind of stuff, but she... Hmm. In a conversation randomly, I don't even know how it it came up. This was like quite a few years ago. She just said to me, yeah, I thought you were being abducted by aliens when you were a child. And I said, well, Mum, I was. (laughs) And she seemed like she wasn't really that surprised. Um, She'd sort of seen and heard things. She didn't want to go into to sort of, any detail like it's Mm -hmm. something I need to sort of follow up with her again and speak to her about it again it just never seems to be the right time but um it's just it was interesting coming from her because she's not into this kind of stuff at all she doesn't watch science science fiction like she doesn't yeah you know like any of this kind of stuff for her to say that you know she'd obviously seen some strange things happening and you know strange things did happen when I was a child it was obviously there was something going on yeah so um it must be comforting to know that you have this kind of corroboration from someone who's actually not so much into yeah, stuff you definitely know, so must have helped yeah definitely mm-hmm. yeah it's just like confirmation you know that it wasn't my imagination or anything like it was it was definitely real yeah. And I know that these things are real, but sometimes you kind of, you doubt yourself. Sometimes you start to think, like, when I think about all the weird things that have happened to me in my life, I start to think, God, am I just crazy? But then I'm, I'm like, no, mm-hmm. I these things really did happen. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the next thing I wanted to bring up, and I'm, I'm not sure, I think this, this did happen after seeing the craft. Um, I, I don't even know how to start talking about this. I, w- I was in my room um at night in bed and this man suddenly appeared in my room um he just was there like he came through some kind of portal or something like that but I couldn't actually see anything if that makes sense but it was like he sort of stepped out of something and he was he was there and um he looked human um this happened a few times, actually. Um, I wasn't scared, which is strange. 
you know, like this man suddenly appears in my room. I mean, oh, I, I well, was, a good energy from him, perhaps he was. Uh, yeah, it was almost like he was kind of familiar to me or something. Mm -hmm. um, so, and he was he was very friendly. Um, he he would sort of talk to me. I I don't remember all of the conversations that that we we had, okay. but this sort of happened a few times over the period of like maybe like two or three weeks. Okay, and the the thing was that he was. Um, wanting me to go with him into space like he said to me you know do you would you like to come with me I, you, I can show you space you can you know see the stars and all of that and I'd always been interested in space always been drawn to space um so I was but like yeah sure <laughs> you know I'd love love to go so on about the third time he said to me okay like uh, do you want to come with me now like tonight and um, so he had this kind of like metal, almost looking sort of circlet or band around his head. He had sort of um, brown hair. It's strange. I can't really remember his face very clearly, but it was dark in my room at okay. night and it was, mm -hmm. you know, a very long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he was like fairly tall. He was kind of, um, you know, like broad shoulders. I remember his footsteps were quite heavy. Um, I had like floorboards in my in my bedroom, and so his footsteps were quite loud on the floorboards. Um, he had some kind of almost like a jumpsuit or something on, a bit kind of military looking. Okay. Um, he had this like some kind of device on his wrist it almost looked sort of like a watch and like when he would like leave he would like press that and then he would like step forward and he would be gone okay um, and it was like I, I didn't see anything like a portal or anything but I sort of just say portal as a way to describe it because because yeah. I don't know how else to describe it um it wasn't like in Star Trek where they kind of gradually disappear or anything like that it was like he would just step forward he would press something on his wrist step forward and he'd be gone because one time after that happened I ran over to that area <laughs> like where he had disappeared and I'm like looking around and trying to work out like what is happening here? How is this guy like disappearing like this? Um, so anyway, back to the night when he wanted me to go with him, um, he, he said, okay, you, you have to like hold my hand. And so I, I held his hand. His hand felt, you know, warm. It felt human. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, I'm, I'm going to count to three and then you step forward with me. So he he counted to three, but then I got scared at last minute and I sort of hung back and he like disappeared and I was like still standing there. And then he came back and he said he was like laughing, mm -hmm. like he wasn't angry or anything. And he said, so are you coming? And I was like, okay. Um, and I held his hand again and then that's it. Like, and I didn't remember anything else about that experience from many many years I mean I remembered that happening like I've always remembered that since I was a child um but I never knew what happened next but then um I did a, a hypnotherapy session about a year ago maybe a little bit less than a year and I had a memory come up that seemed to be connected to that um where I was on some like very large ship and there was a mantis being um, on the ship um, and I've had several interactions with them. There are also two um, blonde-haired um, Pleiadian-looking men in the blue uniforms. One of the men had long, straight blonde hair. The other guy had like shorter blonde hair. Um, it was kind of warm and, and friendly on the ship. There were other children there. Um, and it was like we were up there and we were doing some kind of training. That's that's what I was told. It was some kind of training that we were doing. Um, it, was, it was a bit hard to understand what it was all about, but um, there was something to do with 
um, like the timeline. It was something to do with like there was a whole team of us. There was like a whole group of us that were reincarnated on the earth and a part of that was to like change the timeline because there was like a negative timeline that birth was on so that's that's why we came I mean you know we already know this so yeah. <laughs> but they were sort of going into that in a bit more detail and saying there's people in different locations all over the world and um, they have different roles and they were kind of saying you know that's why all these children were up there because they were getting training about their their roles and I was one of these children okay um yeah so it was really interesting I there was a little bit more to it but it was sort of a bit hard to to understand all of it it was something about anchoring different points in in time so that's part of the thing of of us being physically here incarnated on incarnated on the earth is that we're helping to anchor that actual timeline the new timeline yeah. Um, another thing too that I was told about the man that that took me it was like that he was actually a human from the future. Hmm. So I'm not sure if when I was on this ship, it was in it was in the future. Like I I'm not really sure. <laughs> there's there's still things about all that that I'm trying to work out. Yeah. yeah. And another thing too, I actually asked before this man took me. Um, I asked him, I, I said to him, what about my, my mother? She, she'll know that I'm, I'm gone and I, I'll get into trouble. And he said, no, don't worry about it. Like I will bring you back at, at the same time and she will never know that, that you've been gone. So, you know, there's definitely that um, time travel element to it. And I, I don't know how long I was gone for. Like I don't know if I was just gone for a night or if I was gone for like a longer period of time doing this training or uh, you know whatever whatever was happening I'm, re- I'm really not sure I'm, s- I'm still trying to understand more it's about fa- that so it's fascinating yes. and it also corroborates um, so much of what we have uh, learned lately from different sources from people who are sharing their disclosure either with Dr. Sala with Elena or Daniel about you know yeah. these 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 um I remember, you know, what GP, JP says about this whole time, these time um, stamps, or I don't know how you would call them uh, in English, you know, when the, anyway, he, I don't know if you saw that interview, but I thought it was really kind of interesting yes. how there was display of coming back into different timelines. And and so, I mean, it definitely corroborates a lot of, uh, uh, yes. what you say corroborates a lot of that, but I mean, I, wanna, I, I don't want to cut you, so I want to let you continue when you're on a, a good, uh, on a good roll. <laughs> Yeah, that's like that's okay. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't really know too much more about that experience. But then I had another experience um, around the same age, five or six. Uh, this is a really strange experience. Um, so I was in the city um, of Hobart, which is the capital city in, of Tasmania, where mm-hmm. I grew up. I was there with my mother and my grandmother, and we were in the street. And um, these sort of two men came up and started talking to my mother and my grandmother. And then one of, I sort of got a bit separated from my grandmother and mother. So Mm -hmm. I was kind of standing there a little bit to the side and one of the men came over to me. Um, He was a very um, attractive sort of dark-haired man, Um, probably... You know, he looked about 30 or or maybe younger. I'm not really Mm -hmm. sure. He knelt down in front of me and he said, um, I'm going to give you something. Um, Your life is at risk and your family are potentially in danger and I'm I'm going to give you something to protect you. And this is, like, very serious. And I'm like a little kid and I'm just thinking, what (laughs) you know so he hands me this little um metallic egg he puts it in my hand it's like a little bronze colored egg shaped object and he just said like keep this with you like put it in your pocket keep it with you all the time and it's going to protect you I didn't know what to think I was just kind of like "Uh, okay you know (laughs) 
he, he was very serious but but kind and he just looked into my eyes and he said like you know this is really important so I, I was kind of like okay I put it in my pocket and then he walked away and then the other man who'd been talking to my mother and grandmother then he went as well so they were obviously distracting my mother and my grandmother so they could oh, okay you know um access get access to me and okay. um give me this object so anyway like I definitely had this object. I don't have it anymore, unfortunately. At some point it, it disappeared. But, uh, you know, I I definitely had it. I took it home and I, I put it, I had like a special place in my room where I, I put special things, like it was like a little shelf in a little like dressing table sort of cabinet. Mm -hmm. My mother was in my room sort of cleaning, you know, a week or so later or something, and she saw this thing there because I hadn't said anything to her about it. Like I just didn't say anything. Um, and she picked it up and she was like, what is this? Like, um, and I was, I said to her and she's like, where did this come from? And I said to her, oh, this man gave it to me in the street. And she was like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, she was, and she was like looking at it like, what? Like, but then for some reason she just sort of put it down. She didn't sort of take it off me. She just sort of put it back and she was like, okay, you know, she was just kind of baffled, like she didn't know what to think about it. Um, but I used to sit with this thing. I used to put it in my hands and it kind of used to like vibrate in a very sort of delicate way. It was almost like it was responding to my energy and it sort of would emit this like, sort of very high frequency almost inaudible sound um and it was just fascinating and I, I wish that I still had it I don't know what happened to it like we moved sort of not long after that and we were living with a relative for a while and we had things put in storage and maybe they took it back I, I, I don't I don't know but anyway, um, this story, again, is something that I've remembered since I was a child. Like it's like I've always remembered that, but it's just another thing that I just put on the back burner because it's like I don't know. How to <laughs> I don't know what such, this was about. Like thing. what yeah. the hell was that about, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I started thinking about a lot of this stuff again, you know, maybe about five or six years ago um, because, you know, I started seeing videos online and, you know, for years I kept quiet about all this stuff because, um, you know, there was no YouTube, there was no social media, there was kind of nothing. And I just thought if I talk about these things, people are going to think I'm crazy. So I, I just kept it all to myself. But then, you know, I started to see videos of people talking about their contact experiences and um, I was kind of like, wow, so I'm, I'm definitely not alone then, not that I ever thought it was only me but <laughs> you know and I'm not crazy um so I started thinking about all these things again and the the egg had really bothered me like I really wanted to know what this was about because I sort of started to think is that really how it happened or was that like a screen memory or something like that Do you know what I mean like so anyway I started sort of meditating um and thinking about it and wanting to sort of understand what happened. And one time when I was meditating and I was focusing on it, all of a sudden these like little um, ant beings came, came into my mind, <laughs> mm -hmm. these little black ants. But I now realise that um, they are like a type of mantis, but they're like the smaller the smaller black ones, but they do okay. like look quite a bit like ants. Okay. May, may I cut you for a second? Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, I'm just curious <laughs> because, of course, you, you mentioned the mantids, which are usually, from what I remember from Melina's book, they're usually quite tall, you know, insectoid yes. things uh, and yes. kind of humanoid insectoid, you know, but uh, the, 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 the ant beings that you talk about, uh, could, could that resemble... Uh, eventually also what the uh, I'm trying to remember the Ashai I think uh, that uh, yes JP yes. talks about and Elena talks about is it closer to the mantis or, or closer to the description he has about these being could could, could, could it be it's, it's more, well I'm not sure because the way JP kind of describes them makes it seem like they're a bit taller Okay. I'm, they're more like in, in Elena's book, A Gift from the Stars, the, the okay. smaller uh, black uh, okay. Akara or Akari. Yeah. 
Um, they're more like Mentis. those ones. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but the, the other one that I saw on the ship was actually a taller green one. So I, okay. I've seen that the... the the, I've seen two different kinds. Okay, interesting. Um, so these ones were like the little smaller black ones, the shorter okay. black ones. Okay. Um, it was like they were, ha- it was really cute actually. It was like they were having trouble communicating with me, like I couldn't sort of hear them. So what they did was they did these like little like subtitles in the, in my mind. I know it sounds crazy, but no, no, it's no, actually it's what, what they did. And it was like, Hello, hello, friend. It's good to see you. Um, they seem very happy. Like these ones actually had had emotion. They seemed excited to see me again. It was sort of like they had seen me before, and, and they were they happy knew to you see me again somehow. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And um, and I said to them, like telepathically, I said, "Did did you give me the egg?" And they said, "No, no not us." And then from the side. A, a tall green mantis came in and they they kind of um, moved aside and this tall green one was there. This one I had no trouble or they had no trouble communicating with me. His, he or she, I'm not really sure of the gender, spoke to me telepathically and said that, they, it, that it was their technology. It had actually come from them. And, um, and I said why did you why was it given to me and they said it the reason was because they felt that my free will was being compromised and they wanted to protect me um and it was to like monitor me as well and yeah and so that was kind of interesting but still a little bit confusing because of the way that it it all happened this was only a brief interaction and then they sort of said some other things to me about about my sort of health and things like that and and then that was that um they left and I had a couple of other interactions with them but I it's sort of too much to go into at at this time I, I feel but um I want to kind of continue on with about the egg because I did actually find out a little bit more information about that and this was actually through um, the hypnosis session that I did about a year ago Um, and what I found out was that it was actually um, an operative of a benevolent group that I was um, involved with so this was connected to when I was talking about on the ship and the you know the the plan with the different you know, starseed children and the training and all of that. This was connected mm-hmm. to that. So it was actually this group that um, arranged for this man. So this man was, I believe, a Tal who was working on Earth um, mm-hmm. or, you know, maybe not on Earth all the time, but, you know, they come down to Earth and because they can physically be on, on the Earth. Yeah. Um, and not be recognized and, as I mean, yeah, just go through without being, they can blend in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was he he gave me the egg. And the reason why was that they had um lost connection with me because there were some negative ETs that were interfering with me because I had been abducted by a negative group um of greys, and they had sort of you know, sort of blocked me off somehow or something. They couldn't access me. So they needed to give me this physical technology and apparently the the mantis are very good at technology and Mm -hmm. for for some reason they, you know, decided that this was the best thing to give me. I guess it was like a small thing that I could put in my pocket, you know. Um, So that was, yeah, just to, to reconnect me with them and also it had some kind of protective, I think it was like maybe like some kind of frequency thing or something that maybe protected me. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so that that was that. <laughs> the Regarding the negative um, uh, context, or, uh, I, I, or it's very important for me to respect uh, how much you want to tell us about this or not, so I really want you to feel free to, uh, but just perhaps just to put it in a context or kind of a linear context, uh, these eventual, well, not eventual, but I mean these, um, uh, what's the word, uh, abductions, do, do you know if they took place relatively at the same time like chronologically how does that kind of fit in the you know when the when the man brought you on the ship like was it kind of after before do you, do you have kind of an idea of 
I'm not really sure, no. actually, with that. I know about other events that happened when I was older, but at that time I'm not really sure. Something okay. happened in, in there amongst those sort of experiences that I've just spoken about. Okay. I'm not sure exactly when. I don't have very clear, okay, like really any clear memory of, of what happened then. Yeah. Um, later on I, I do have more sort okay. of memories, but... Oh, but, um, just to just to yeah. put that a little yeah. bit. Yeah, <laughs> still try, I'm still working on that. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, and, and I'm sure it's that. a lot of material. It's very confusing some yeah. of it because it's like a lot of stuff, um, and it's it gets a bit confusing. Yeah, yeah. So um, you, I, I, I don't know, but I, I want to let you talk. I, I don't know if you want to speak more to that or if you prefer to kind of move on to another area of your rememberings or your memories yeah I mean there's another experience that I had when I was about nine or ten um which can sort of lead to us talking more about this kind of star side mm -hmm. of things I guess okay. which sure. is nice <laughs> yeah absolutely you're welcome um <laughs> so I had so I was at that age of nine or ten I started like sleepwalking a lot okay. um And I would actually go out outside, um, much to the distress of my mother. I imagine. <laughs> it, um, so I believe I, I had a negative abduction experience at that time as well because I I was sleepwalking um, one time and I was sort of came into the room, my mother's room, and I was like screaming and I was very, very scared um, and she it's like I sort of woke up and I was standing there. Like I didn't even know where I'd been or what I'd been doing. And she was like, well, okay. you know, what's wrong? What, you know, what happened? And, yeah. and I said to her, I, I don't, I don't know. And, and these are the reasons why I think she was thinking I was abducted as well, just because a lot of stuff like that's happened in my, in my life. And um, yeah, I really need to talk to her more about it really about what, what she sort of saw and experienced. But anyway, so, this this happened again and I, I was out outside. Suddenly I sort of became conscious that I was outside and there was like a ship above my head. It had very, very bright lights. It was kind of like blinding. Um, and this beam of light like came down and sort of caught me in it and started to like lift me up towards this ship. And I was just like paralyzed like because it paralyzes you mm -hmm. and I was very um I don't know it, I, I felt like numb like it sort of numbs you as well and I just remember like sort of like I was lying back looking up towards this ship and thinking well there's nothing I can do about this you know so I'm going I'm going up then all of a sudden something strange happened it was like this like beam of light came from the side and like all of a sudden like it stopped like I stopped moving okay and then I started to slowly go down and I'm thinking what is happening here An so intervention? Like, I, yeah <laughs> that seems to be what happened so I went down to the ground and I was just sort of standing there then after that I I didn't remember anything else that that happened after that Like, again, this is a memory that I've, I've had, like, you know, since I was a child, but I just sort of never knew what would happen next. And it always puzzled me. Like, I was always like, what happened? Like, was there, like, another ship, like, or was I uh, remembering that wrong? Or, but it, it did seem like there was, an, like, another craft there and, and they had actually stopped me from being taken up on this ship. So, anyway, um, I'm still trying to find out about that but I did have a memory around that time and I'm, I'm not sure if it's from from the same night or not so basically what I remember I just remember waking up in my bed the next day like okay that that's so I don't know what happened after that mm -hmm. but I I had this memory sort of around that time of being somewhere I don't know where I was and I was with this like these beautiful like blonde haired women and I get emotional every time I think about it because like the love that I I felt from them was so 
intense and I, I felt so at home with them. I felt like, you know, these are my people. Yeah. And um, they were like hugging me, um, these these women. And there might have been like a man there as well, but I just remember these women. And it felt like a physical experience because I I um I could feel them like hugging me and and I remember saying to them like please don't make me go back like I don't want to go back <laughs> like I want to stay here with you and it was so emotional like I was crying and I was saying look we really we're really sorry but you know you you, you agreed to come here and like you have to go back and um yeah it was very it was very emotional but like I always remember that that feeling of love, like love from them and um you know they look like angels like you know and, and now I know that they were a, a hell Pleiadians um but at the time I didn't know that I just knew I knew that they were my people I just knew yeah. that that was like where... an inner knowing of the heart yeah just, like, surrounded by yeah. this kind of unconditional love from home in a way yeah absolutely so so you know that's that's a beautiful memory that, I, that I've, I've always had that since okay. I was a child as well so wow that's beautiful so, yeah <laughs> and how how what is now your relationship towards this actual memory if you want I just before we go perhaps further if you have if you had any other contacts with these beautiful people but do, do, do have you felt um I don't know a sense of of do you still feel a sense of home homesickness or 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 you or you you feel you're capable of more integrating right now your role here on Terra? Because I, I, I talk about this because I think we're a lot of people who star seeds who feel this homesickness. And I think it's really important to re kind of remember or to remind ourselves of also why we're here. And I think what you're saying is very beautiful. Like these ladies said that you actually had chosen that experience and to come mm -hmm. here. So I think it's really important to always kind of remember that for to give, you know, also a little bit of hope to other people who probably feel the same way as you and I regarding this. So um, how, how do you feel today regarding this, you being in this place here? And um, My feelings fluctuate from, from day to day. Um, I've struggled a lot with being in, in this reality. Like I've um, experienced a lot of depression in my life and, you know, just feeling very alone and like I didn't belong here but what I want to say is that I, I feel that it's been made easier by making these connections with with people online you know people like you it's like over the last few years in particular like many of us have, have come together um you know and, and mostly online because we're on all different parts of the planet and I really believe that was part of the plan you know was for us to all connect to re reconnect at this time because many of us know each other from before this life Absolutely. from before coming here yeah. yeah so that actually makes it easier makes it a lot easier um and I feel like um Elena Danan was a big part of that I mean that's how I connected with you through Elena's work you know I used to see you in the, the yeah. chats like years ago from years ago and, yeah yeah <laughs> you know she's actually helped bring a lot of us she's helped bring a lot of us together you know because a lot of us um you know started watching her videos I just kind of came across her and I was blown away I was just kind of like wow you know like this like I felt like I knew who she was, you know, know what I mean? It's sort of like yeah. a lot of us, I think we recognise her. We know, we know, oh, yeah, that's her, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And that Especially was all part her of the plan. if you're from the Pleiades. And it, it, yeah. I don't know if you, well, you, you say you probably yeah. feel from, from Ahil, so it's probably um, at Ahil, you know. So, uh, again, you know, yes. like being from there, well, you know, she's Altian. But anyway, long story short, uh, you probably yeah. connected even more to that particular material due to the fact that, you know, what she was um sharing in her book also uh, gave us also so much information about these intuitions we had and there was all oh, confirmations finally it felt good so uh, I, I can Ab see absolutely yeah absolutely yeah. and yeah. Have, have you had any other um contact or experiences with these the the ahil um in the sense is that happening? um yeah yeah i i have um it's sort of hard to talk about. A lot of it's sort of 
you know, sort of psychic, sort of telepathic type experiences. Um, yeah, there was something I was going to talk about, but I don't remember now. It's like it went out of my mind. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I cut you. I made you lose no, your train okay. of thought. I apologize. It was kind of relating to that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, so, like, I, I just wanted to say that since I was a child, I knew that I wasn't from here, but I didn't know where I was from yeah. until I was a teenager and then someone started speaking about the Pleiades. I don't remember in what kind of context, but it resonated inside me. Something inside me said, that's where I'm from. Like I just that's I just home. knew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know that they don't call it the Pleiades, but mm. what I want to say is that so a few months before I discovered Elena's um, work, um, which was probably about three years ago now, maybe. Um, so I had this experience where I was kind of asking, you know, about my people and, and all of that. And I, I kept getting this, these words in my head, um, Manahu, Manahu, Manahu. Wow. And I was like, what? is this like it was kind of driving me a little bit crazy and I'm like what are you talking about but I couldn't sort of get any any more like information about it until like a few months later maybe about six months later I'm not sure how long it was I discovered Elena and her work and she was you know I was watching one of her videos and she was talking about that Manahu was the actual name of the Pleiades that's what they call it and I was just blown away. I was like, oh, my God, like that's what they were trying to tell me. So that was actually a really good confirmation for me. And, and also, you know, <laughs> also Elena as well. But, I mean, I didn't yeah. need convincing. You know, I kind of yeah. felt her energy and I, I knew, yeah. I like I knew that she was who she said she was and, mm -hmm. you know. Um, wow, yeah. this is a, an incredible experience. I mean, the, the, the actual word yeah. came to you before the, wow. I know. I was so blown away. Um, so, yeah, it was, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that for sure. Um, but I was going to say, and I'm grateful to Elena as well, very, mm -hmm. very much so, um, for speaking out and, and helping us all to, to come together because she has really been key in that, I believe. Um, yeah. But I wanted to um, speak about another experience I, I had actually, which was kind of a confirmation of, of me being from ERA, kind of. Um, so when my son was like a few years old, I, I was very depressed at the time and I was just going through a really difficult time. And I remember I was sitting on my, my sofa. So this was about 20 years ago, 19 or 20 years ago. And um, all of a sudden this woman sort of came it's like she sort of appeared in front of me, but not physically, but sort of like in an etheric form, if, if that makes sense. And there was kind of like a man there as well, but I didn't see him as clearly. But she was like, she had the beautiful long blonde hair, a hell looking, mm -hmm. the blue uh, skin tight uniform. And she said to me, you know, she said, I know, I know that you're really sad um, now, but, um, you know, everything's going to be okay. And she said, um, you know, you came here for a reason. And she showed me this, like, image in my mind and she, she said, this, is, this life that you're living now is, is like a dream. And she showed me this image of someone in, like, a kind of, you know, stasis pod. Oh. Mm. And I didn't know anything about this kind of thing then. This was, like, 20 years ago. Um, and I see what is she showing me? And she said to me, that's, that's you, that's the real you. And this life that you're living now is like a dream. It's like you, you're dreaming this dream. And she said to me, you, you can create a, a better reality here. Uh, you just need to dream a better dream. And, um, she said, you know, there'll be things that you'll, you'll be doing in the future and you just need to hang, hang in there and, she didn't use those words, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. you need to just um, keep going and, and you'll create create the kind of life that you want and, 
you know, just don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. Aww. And I was really confused by that though. Like, I mean, it was a beautiful experience, but this whole thing of like, what is this like mm-hmm. person in the, and she's saying that's me. And so again, like, you know, 20, well, not 20 years later, 17 years mm-hmm. later, I come across Elena's material and I hear her speaking about people being put in stasis pods and then incarnating on earth and again I was like oh my god that's what I was being shown that's what I was being told and it makes so much sense now (laughs) but at the time I was really confused I was like I don't understand like it it must have been quite overwhelming for you when you discovered Elena I mean it's it's one thing to discover this material but it's one thing to remember or or like being confirmed about information you had 20 years earlier I mean that's just like out there in terms of of just like you must have felt so overwhelmed from those confirmations I I really did I really did and it just made me happy because I I sort of was like finally you know (laughs) it's like okay so I'm not just I'm not crazy like this this is real like um yeah, it was it was great to get that, that confirmation. I'm I'm very grateful. Very grateful. So yeah. It's amazing. Uh, your story obviously really resonates with my heart um, because of Era, but also I mean the fact that you um not only did you bring all these corroborations to um you know the material that's already kind of out there and lately, I mean it's it's just absolutely amazing. Your story is absolutely amazing. And I want you to really uh, I want to thank you so much for having the courage to share all of this with us. Uh, I know perhaps today it's a little bit easier than it would have been for you 20 years ago, uh, but still, I think you you had uh, great courage to, you know, come public with that. Uh, it's really, really crucial information that's very powerful and it's going to help a lot of people feel that, you know, they're not crazy and, you know, this, it corroborates a lot of material that's um i mean seriously out there right now so it's it's powerful stuff i know you're on a journey of of healing and recovery Uh, i'm sure you'll probably recover more and more um information or more memories from this um you know you're always welcome on that channel if that's something you feel like furthermore in your journey you'd like to share more or share more about other types of experiences on which you just perhaps brushed a bit on but Mm. Also, you're always welcome if that's something you feel comfortable talking uh, and sharing with people, because I think it's really, really important. And I think your disclosure is uh, is very, it's very special. So um, I guess we're going to close our, our interview here because there's so much material is so rich. <laughs> um, but um, before we go, I don't know if there's a, a few words you'd like to share with the viewers in terms of, I don't know, just your own words of wisdom of, of or just, you know, your experience or just last few words <laughs> well I just want to say thank you to you Gail and I, I'd be happy to come on again and, and speak about more of my because there's more that I haven't actually spoken about and <laughs> as you know I'm still you know uncovering memories and putting pieces of the puzzle together it's not it's an ongoing journey um, I just wanted to say to the other star seeds not just the star seeds actually but but everyone who's incarnated on earth at this time this time to remember that we all came here for a reason and you know I know it gets hard sometimes and we want to go home and you know I I I feel like that every every second week you know (laughs) but you know I am committed to being here and I and I keep making that commitment to being here on earth and being part of this plan like there is a plan that that we're all a part of Um, And even though we don't fully understand it because we don't see the bigger picture, but, you know, we just have to trust that our staff families are there behind the scenes, like nudging us and helping us. And, you know, like we're not alone. And and I'm just so grateful to this community of, of lovely people that have all come together and, you know, and that, and that was all part of the plan. So, yeah. So let's just hang in there and, and get this done, you know. 
Absolutely. I think things are moving quite rapidly, uh, even though we're a bit impatient. Uh, but I think a lot of things are coming out. And your personal experience you shared today is one of the examples of, you know, information getting out there. So it's powerful stuff. Uh, I think you have a lot of courage. I, I want to thank you. And also thank you for being, you know, part of this beautiful community indeed uh, that, uh, you know, we're, without you guys, I don't know how it, you know, kind of continue. I mean, it's, 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 it's so much support, so much love, so much um, benevolence and openness. And it's, it's very, it's powerful to have all of you. So thank you for being one of those beautiful souls for all you are and all you do. So thank you so much. And uh, again, I, um, you know, you're welcome anytime you want to come on the channel. So I wish you good luck on all your journey of recovery of information and discovery and healing and inner journey. And um Thank you again for everything. <laughs> All right. Thank so you. take care of yourself, Melanie. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hello, beautiful soul. You have been on a spiritual journey for some time, or perhaps you're just starting your inner journey. Uh, and you probably have questions uh, that remain unanswered right now, although all your answers lie within yourself, as always. Uh, but sometimes we need someone to just give us a little nudge. And uh, personally, as an intuitive and a transmitter and a creator, I have uh, created my own type of approach where I offer the people the opportunity to ask um, a few questions, a maximum of five questions, where they uh, I will provide from my inner guidance, which is the fractal of source that I am and that you are as well, uh, as well as my high vibration guidance, will provide a vocal transmission uh, and also we we will be creating a an artwork just for you, um, unique and original, uh, based on your questions and the motifs and the colors that will be chosen uh, for the artwork will will have uh, in some ways some um, information about uh, your the answers to your question. And I will also use uh, a piece of music that either through the frequency of its melody, of its words, will also have give you some clues as to um, uh, what the answers to your questions might be. And I only serve as a nudge, as a pointer, in order for you to, after that, uh, um, resonate or not with this information and then you can pursue your own uh, spiritual and inner journey uh, just uh, having been just to help a little bit on the path so if you're interested in a creative intuitive transmission session which i call cit uh, i invite you to uh, follow the link that's uh, below uh, in the description of this video and on my website abigailrichard.com slash cit and don't hesitate to ask for more information or just uh, book a session have a lovely day bye